Okay, so we are starting Science 7, plant, um, Science 7, Plants for Food and Fiber, and the topic is plant reproduction. This is the first time I've actually used this application. It's called Screencastify, I think. Anyways, this seems to be working so far. Um, so in reproduction, early humans were hunters and gatherers, and later agriculture was developed. And this was because um, primarily division of labor was originally created between um, men and women for the simple reason that women had to breastfeed their babies. And by staying home and gathering around the village, the babies were able to stay with them. Um, so that's really interesting. I could get more into that, but not now. For selective breeding, people chose specific plants with spe specific characteristics and encouraged these plants to reproduce. And that's talking about, say, for example, we can eat carrots, so we're more likely to find seeds and grow carrots than, say, a rose. You can't eat a rose, you can smell it, but you can't really eat it. So plants can be selectively bred for their size, their ability to withstand environmental conditions, their hardiness, and how much food and fiber they produce or yield, and that their resistance to disease. So say for example we had an entire field of corn and there was this tiny group of corn that survived a very large storm, a farmer would be smart to grab those seeds and maybe plant all those corn in the next season. Also that could be a similar result with a disease plant. Um, new genes. Canada is responsible for developing canola, um, Canadian oil, um, developed using selective breeding of rapeseeds, and breeders developed canola that are resistant to disease and drought. And you can see in this diagram over to the right that um, the genes that have been sliced in the tomato, they, the, those tomatoes actually last longer. And there's a lot of people that are of the opinion that um, genetically modified organisms are very bad for you. Um, there's arguments on both sides, and we're going to get more into GMOs and all that in a couple of slides. So breeders develop canola to, that are resistant to disease and drought. We just talked about that. And genetic material genes, they're part of a cell that controls the organism's characteristics. Now, we're not talking about the genes that you wear to school. We're talking about a group of DNA. So a set of sequence. Say, for example, you had numbers four, four, five, six. Each of those are numbers. Each of those are strands of DNA. Collectively, they're a group of numbers, and collectively, a group of DNA is a gene. Scientists now have the ability to change plants by changing genetic material. They combine genetic material of two different plants. So previously, I might have talked to you about how they've taken a gene from a salmon that is able to go in very cold water, and they've actually put it into a tomato plant, and the tomato plant is able to grow in much more harsher conditions because tomatoes generally prefer to grow in a temperature of 28 degrees centigrade. This is called genetic modification or genetic engineering. Disease resistance grains, fruits, tomatoes that ripen slowly, rice with high vitamin A levels, um, another example is how scientists have actually managed to put vaccines into fruits and vegetables. So instead of giving a child that's very scared of a needle, um, a big needle, what they do instead is they put it inside of a fruit and vegetable and the vaccine is given to that child. Um, so going into information about your journal entry, this is the link that is found in the slides and also on an individual hyperlink in the D2L shell. There, there are a list of videos and movies that you can be watching, and I'm not expecting you to watch a three-hour movie. There are some that are between four and seven minutes. 
and I want you to click on this actual hyperlink and go to the website. I'm just actually going to click that now and see if that works. Um, yeah, as you can see right here is this beautiful website that is just full of wonderful different videos. Um, some are 75 minutes, some are four. Um, take your pick. But the expectation is for you to go in there and do an actual review. So the criteria of your GMO um, journal entry is located in your food and fiber booklet. So I encourage you to go check that out. Also, I've actually put a link to Health Canada. Um, and this actually shows uh, what foods are genetically modified and if there's any recalls or if there's any foods that are not good for you or anything like that, it's located at this um, website. Um, just checking. Good. Okay, so next we're going to go into types of plant reproduction. So there's plant reproduction that's asexual and plant reproduction that is sexual. So right now, go ahead, um, take a few minutes and talk to the person next to you and see whether you can figure out what does asexual versus sexual mean in terms of plant reproduction. Okay, so hopefully you had a second to talk to your neighbor about that. So the biggest difference between this is um, the asexual reproduction. So, oh, look at this funky tool right here. Um, the asexual reproduction is talking about when a plant um, just breeds with itself, which it means that it's actually creating a clone of itself. Um, sexual reproduction means that the plant is breeding with another separate plant. Um, and we're going to get into how that stuff works. So right here, you can see up to the top left of the screen that there's a bee. He goes in, he gets his nectar, he gets it all those things that he just loves, and he just happens to take a piece of pollen. Now, bees don't actually go into a plant and grab the pollen. It just generally just rests on top of their body. Next, he goes and visits another plant, and he deposits the pollen on the top of the female part of the plant. The pollen is the male. Anyways, the pollen goes down into the plant, and it creates seeds. And you can see over on the right-hand slide, top right of the slide that the pollen grain sits at the top of the stigma and what happens is it actually makes this tube that goes down and the embryo or the baby plant but it's not really a full plant because it only has half of the genetic information that it needs um, goes into the plant and gets together with the egg and poof turns into a seed um, you guys went to the food and fiber um, field trip at the zoo, and you can see right here that cuttings and burying the plant underneath and producing another plant, as well as grafting, those are different kinds of breeding. So this is, for example, cutting. You're just cutting that plant and you're making another version of the plant. This is asexual reproduction, whereas the top part is sexual reproduction. So one thing I do want you to get inside your heads right now in terms we're talking about um, Latin, um, and scientific names is that flowers, all plants that are flower producing are called angiosperm plants. And if you do not have a flower yet you have some kind of seed, um, those are called gymnosperms. Very important that you understand the difference between those two words. Um, I just thought I'd put this in. When you go vegan, you enter the world of plant-based cooking, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And I can actually speak to that on a personal level in that sometimes I look in the fridge and all I have is vegetables and I just really want a juicy steak, but I need to eat the stuff in my fridge, and you have to improvise and adapt, and you have to overcome. Um, so one thing I want you to look at, remember when we're talking about evolutionary biology, 